Hello everybody, Michael here for Tactic Imperialis. Welcome to today's video. Today is going to be another hobby update for my Tau. Because I, at the end of the last video I did, I'd finished my first start collecting box. Um, I have made a few expansions since that point. Um, I've made some progress on the second start collecting box, but I've also branched out into a few new units that I want to show off. So... I have now actually played some games as well. I thought I think it would be good to let you know how the army is performing on the table. Um, I went along um, last week at the time of recording to a start collecting doubles where everybody brought a start collecting box. Uh, and that was their army and you formed a doubles team and you played three games and you got whatever you got. I got lumped with someone who didn't know what was going on and brought, had brought Eldar. I think it was the standard gaming day. Uh, they had to use a battle force so that didn't end all that well. We got beaten by... Um, guard and Nurgle demons, primarily due to the fact that the Lehman Rus Eradicator refused to miss. Uh, we drew with a Blood Angels and Salamanders combination, uh, mainly due to the fact that um, the Space Marine Captains refused to fail their 2 plus armor saves for an age. Um, although I did pop a Dreadnought on turn 1 with um, Bright Swords Twin Fusion Blasters, which was a lot of fun. Uh, well, it was expected, but it was still helpful. And then my partner had to leave, so I ended up tag teaming with a Chaos player who used the Half of Dark Vengeance um, as near as he could. And we were facing Crimson Fists and Grey Knights. Again, I think people just got their wires crossed. Um, because the Crimson Fist player had Cantor. Yeah, we got a little bit shattered on this one. Uh, not that he did anything. And we narrowly lost that one, mainly due to the fact that the Grey Knights teleported in on turn one and dropped a cleansing flame that nuked half of our board. They admittedly got wiped off the board in return, but good God, it hurt. So we came out with um, two losses and a draw. Um, and I think what I learned is, well, one, Tau Commanders can fight in melee. That was something I learned. Um, but I also learned that Crisis Battle Suits are not as fast as they're supposed to be, and they're pretty flimsy. Um, Tower Let's Go is not amazing, and I was running two marker drones, a separate unit, for this reason. Um, I think you really do rely on multiple units with Tau in order to make them work. I think big squads is not the way to go. You need to be able to split your fire amongst multiple targets at once, particularly when you're outnumbered, as you often would be against um, horde armies. So having multiple big units, while it will take units out, pretty much take an entire unit off the board at a time, you just simply won't have enough firepower to take down all the targets coming at you. So there is an argument for MSU in Tau, which is something that Kieran used to do when we, when he used to collect them. But I think I've still got a lot of learning to do. That was just with start collecting things, and it was the first time I played competitively in a tournament-based setting, I think, ever. Well, at least as long as I can remember for a good while anyway. A good few years at least. Um, so it was a learning curve for me. Um, I'm still obviously learning the army. Anyway. Uh, I just wanted to let you know how the gaming's going. Um, when I go home, there will obviously be more games, and I'll bring them to you in the whole battle report, I hope. But anyway, let's stop talking gaming. Let's talk models. So I've got four units to show off. Um, three of Two of them are complete, and two of them are as near as makes no difference, in my eyes, complete. Uh, well, I say that. Uh, I've kind of got... I've got I've got the other two pretty much done, but there's bits I need to finish, but we'll talk about those when we get to them. So, with that all out of the way, after a very long rambling intro, let's get into the models for my Tau, shall we? Okay, first up, we have a Piranha, with a Fusion Blaster and the two Gun Drones, of course. Now, I'm sure the invisible voice is in my head, and I'm sure a few of you will probably be saying right now, why isn't it on its flying base, because the flying base is just there. Well, one, it's easier for the video, and two, this thing is a jerk with its flying base. So, I put it on a slightly tall flying base, I think, the first time I put it on one of the drone stands by mistake, because I sort of wanted to do um, sort of a different posing, how it really high up and sort of like, like pulling out of a dive, um, and that broke, um, so I put it on a shorter stand thinking that'll help. And that broke, and the little top bit on the flying stand got stuck inside the piranha, so I can't mount it on another one. So I've got it. On, I've got a little short flying stand here, but I'm going to need to drill out the bottom of the piranha in order to create the base for it to stand on again, 
which is extremely annoying because I know how flying bases work now, but I just left it overnight, just sat on its flying base while it dried and everything else because I'd done a bit of a heavy undercoat, or base coat, should I say. I left it overnight to dry on the flying stand, and before I knew it, it was broken, much to my annoyance. Anyway, um, with that out of the way, let's talk about the model itself. So this this actually threw me off for a while. I actually built this wrong the first time. I built the wing fins the wrong way up because I'm a moron. I didn't think about the drone mountings. I put them in the wrong way up. Clever me. So I had to pull them out, which was no small amount of work because they're pushing. Um, well, they're sort of pushing. They go into little slots. Um, but the risk is if you try and yank them out after being glued in, you'll break the slot. So I had to really just use a lot of elbow grease just to wiggle them out, just to make sure they didn't um, go everywhere and leave me an impossible job to fit them again. Thankfully, I didn't break anything. Um, I think the engines were still off the main hull at this time, so I got away with it um, pretty well. Uh, as far as the paint scheme goes, it follows the rest of the Tau in my army uh, with the deep blue uh, with um, the Ard Coat Glaze to finish, Ice Blue Edge Highlighting, Red as a contrast colour, slash spot colour, whatever you want to call it, and I've done that on the front of the wings, on the main wing panels, and on the nose, and it's also, if I just turn them around, the main colour I've used for the engines and the side panel, there's a little side panel here, the back engine panel there. Um, so that's that. Okay. Um, if I take the drones out, is this going to fall over all the time? Because it's bugging me that every time I move it, it falls over a bit. <sighs> Piranhas. Not the best things for getting to stand up. Anyway, I'll, I'll put the drones here. The, the drones I've just put in, I think, are the drones from the kit, but all the gun drones look the same to me. So, um, I'm kind of having trouble keeping track of which drones belong to which unit. Um, so these may be drones you've seen before, but I think they're the right ones. Um, I've then done uh, the orange edge highlighting like I usually do on my reds. Uh, let me just get it back to focus on my help. Yeah, that's better. <coughs> Excuse me. Got yellow for the weapon barrel, kind of like I've done before. I think you saw it on Bright Sword uh, last, in the last video, which I put in the description if you haven't seen it. Got a bit of yellow over here, and it's on the same on this side. And underneath, uh, there you can see it was my attempts to get the little bit of flying stand out. That didn't really work all that well. See, it's the same sort of pattern underneath, reds, blues, silvers, and I heavily washed these grills, oops, sorry, these grills and this front vent, because I'm imagining that this is where a lot of um, debris and stuff gets, so it makes sense that it's got a little bit messy over time. Why is it? There we go. Uh, the crew are painted just like regular Fire Warriors, there's absolutely nothing unique about them. Um, they're probably missing one highlight, um, which is the Narlock Green on there. Oh no, I have, I have sort of done it. It's the Narlock Green on their fatigues. Um, I think I missed it on the back guy, but everything just sort of lines up. I was a little bit worried that it was gonna to be too blue, that the Fire Warriors wouldn't stand out compared to the ship, and they don't really, but then again, the armor matches, so I'm not that fussed about it really at all. Um, the Fusion Blaster is glued in place. Um, I debated making it interchangeable with the Burst Cannon, but what I'm going to be using this Piranha for is something that I also realized that Tau, in its current iteration that I have at the moment, lacks dreadfully, is anti-tank. I have Commander Brightsword with his twin fusion blasters. Um, I have another unit that I'll be showing a little bit later in this video, and that's about it. So I needed an anti-tank, hence Piranha has a fusion blaster and will always have a fusion blaster because that's what it's designed for. And then, of course, two gun drones painted the same as all the other drones I've done before with their pulse carbines. So that's unit number one. Let's now move on to the second unit. Unit number two is the most recent project, which is a box of 10 Pathfinders. And the invisible voices in my head are chiming again, asking where are the drones? Well, they're not finished. Uh, the recon drone, if you care, is there. Um, this thing's a pain, by the way, uh, because the burst cannon can get stuck in one position or another. So that's there, it's not finished. I've just been base coating that really. Uh, getting that started. It's really nice, the model, but it's got a lot of holes in it. I've realized, just like the burst cannon rotate, it's got a lot of holes in it. But still, cool model. Um, I've also built the gravity drone and the um, pulse accelerator drone, just because they're unique, um, but they're not painted at all. As far as these guys go, I've built them with two rail rifles, just for the simple reason of rail weapons 
are way too much damn cool. Um, and because I have a feeling that when I run the Pathfinders, I probably might like to have a five-man dedicated marker team, but then be able to use the rail as sort of um, a little bit of sniping. So like their strength 6 AP 1 with a 30-inch range, they're not bad at sniping things. So if I just get a small unit of five set with no Shaz Wee, they can just go sniping, or even a four-man team, because that's the minimum size for a Pathfinder team. Just have a four-man team with two rail rifles just sat out of the way, sniping at things like Terminators, Captains, Monstrous Creatures, just trying to plink wounds off here and there. <coughs> Heck, I can even use them as a Skyfire unit if I need some extra shots to try and force a jink. Um, but mainly it's the aesthetics, because rail guns are too cool. I, I've sort of crunched the science behind them before in a video, if you want to go and check it out. Um, Pathfinders are so, so, so easy to do. They are ludicrously easy because they have less armor. So if I just get random dude number seven, you can see that compared to a fire warrior, he has no shoulder pad. He has no leg armor, uh, sorry, upper leg armor, I should say. Um, some of them don't have a left shoulder armor at all. Um, they have no backpack. Um, they are ridiculously easy to do. The Pulse Carvine is a two-step job because you've got to put the mark light on as well, otherwise they're just the same paint job as on the gun drones. And yeah, they are really, really easy to do. Um, I could knock out a Pathfinder if I was trying. Probably I could get a, two guys done in an hour, assuming I was like doing it as a mini batch. Um, one gripe I have about some of the Pathfinders is the way they're forced to look down. Uh, or being such I think the main ones is these two, although that may just be the way I built the heads. It they very likely look like they're looking down. I mean, this one I could probably have fixed, but this guy, and short of really forcing the head into an awkward spot where it wouldn't look right, looking face on, he's kind of forced to look down, which I don't like. Then again, maybe I just picked the wrong legs for that model. Um, that could be my just but that torso and then that combo of arms, you've really got to make them look up, which is something that I kind of learned with my orcs as well. You've got to put them in a certain position, but they're not ball fit, these guys. They're flat fits. But minor gripe, the kit's cool, and the kit's really, really easy to do. Um, you've seen my pulse carbines before, but as far as the rail rifles go, so they are red with a white ending, a uh, white plasma our magnetic field generator, whatever it is. Uh, bit of extra white sections, uh, black in the lines, and then they've got this little fin on the end, which in this one has a bit of orange, or the other one has a bit more orange on it. Uh, they're then orange highlighted along the middle, around the outside, kind of like my pulse rifles. Washed down, done. Uh, there's also, a, I think there's a little bit of silver on them. Uh, yeah, the little ammo loader at the back is painted silver. You'll see it in a bit more detail on the next model that we come to. And the Shaz Wee, now I, I wasn't sure how to make the Shaz Wee stand out. Um, so I just model him slightly differently. You can you, you probably picked him out very quickly. He's running with a pair of binoculars and um, his hand to his earpiece. Uh, which are acting a bit longer than Fire Warriors, which is kind of neat. So like he scouted something and now he's running to redeploy as a result of it. I did have to trim the monocular slightly um, just to fit in, up to the faceplate because it's designed to fit with a bear head rather than a fire warrior head. Um, but it's not too bad. I then glued his pulse rifle, pulse carbine, sorry, to his um, little extra Shazwi backpack thingamajib, thingamajib jib. And then he's got his bonding knife as well because all Farsight Tower. The bonding knife ritual. And I then, I actually put a little glaze of Ardcoat, um, I'll try and focus on him, a little glaze of Ardcoat on his binoculars, just because I thought it would make sense that it was sort of like gleaming as it's scouted around, it's reflective, glass lenses as we would do or whatever. So they're my Pathfinders, um, I was going to be getting a team of Pathfinders pretty soon regardless because... Well, they're Pathfinders, and Pathfinders have marker lights, and marker lights are really bloody good. But I've got the rail if I need some sniping as well. I debated Ion, but I don't like Ion weapons half as much. So that is unit number two. Now let's move on to my biggest purchase um, in terms of model. And here he is, an XV-88 broadside battle suit. 
In this configuration, he has the twin-linked heavy rail rifle because I'm going to be honest, rail weapons are too damn cool. They look awesome, they are awesome, and I will not take no for an answer. Thankfully, um, it is detachable, so I can put the missile pods on if I should so wish to, but I haven't got around to painting them yet because I have so much anti-inventory fire in this army already that I don't really need any more. The rail rifle is better at popping big stuff. Although, there's a bit of a debate to be had about that. Um, when I get round to reviewing the 7th edition Tower Codex, I will talk about that. Anyway, um, the Invisible Voices are chiming in for the third time this video, will they ever please shut up? And they are asking, well, one, where are the drones? Um, same thing, they're not painted. Um, drones are my unit of least concern. Honestly, I could give less of a care about, I couldn't really give less of a care about drones. They'll get done when they get done, which is probably going to be after every other model in the army is done. So the Crisis Battle Suits from the second um, Stark Galactic box need to be finished, actually need to be started. And then I'll do the drones, because they're just not that important. Honestly, they can wait. And the other thing is, well, where's his secondary weapon system? There's supposed to be a plasma rifle or a smart missile system just over here somewhere. And the straight answer that I have for you is I haven't painted that either. Um... When I got this guy done, my simple intention was make him as customizable as possible, which means that the arms need to be interchangeable and the secondary weapon system needs to be interchangeable as well. Oh, excuse me. I am going to put the Seeker Missile onto his suit permanently, just because it's going to be easier to do it that way. I tried putting on the support system, but it was just having none of it. The arms were being extremely annoying with it. So I gave up on that idea. I'm just going to put the Seeker Missile on when that's done. Um, so I've got the Twin Link Plasma Rifles to paint. I've got the Missile Pods, the High Yield Missile Pods to paint. I've got the Smart Missile System to paint. And I've got the Seeker Missile to paint. But in terms of the core model, he's done. And that's the important bit. This should also give you a bit of a better look at how rail weapons are painted in my army because, well, it's a damn sight bigger than the rail rifles on my Pathfinders. So, if I'm just careful... Come on, there we go. So you can see it is a red case with orange edge highlighting. Well, hopefully you can see that. Um, actually, what I might do, just give me a second. There we go, problem solved. I've just put the light on on my camera so you can get a little bit of a better look if I just... Get it back into focus, because I think it's going to be out of focus. There we go. So, it is simply the painted, similar to my pulse weapons. It is red with orange edge highlighting, although there is a distinctly larger amount of white on the barrel, on this little segment here, on this segment here, and on the um, whirly thingamajig. I'm really not sure quite what it is. I, I want to believe it's the magnetic field generator um, that drives the pulse... Uh, that drives you the pulse rounds, or in this case, the solid shell rail rounds down the barrel of the gun. And that's painted in white, just like it is on the pulse carbines of just about, well, everybody. Uh, it also has a little blue uh, scope painted in the armor colors. And there are little bits of silver as well, including the ammo holder. Well, I believe it's the ammo holder, if the rail rifles or anything to go by. And that's painted in silver. Uh, you can also see his arm as well, which is painted the same as for the Crisis Battle Suits, which is green um, for the Under Armour and then blue for the Main Armour itself, with a little bit of silver thrown in for good measure. There is also a little blue thing under here. Um, I'm struggling to remember what this was. Um, it, it's some thingamajig. I'm not really sure what it's for. Um, but it's there. It's a thing. Um, and it's relevant in some way. And there's the other side if you are interested. Um... I'm trying to remember why I didn't paint that in a section. I'm assuming it can be glued um, if you want the rail rifle to be on permanently, so it's a little bit less wibbly, I guess, or just holds in place. I think it probably goes onto the underside of his battle suit, so it just locks it into place if you wanted to do that, but I'm not doing that. And it's completely hidden anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Right, let's put this guy back with his gun on. And there we go. I've decided to leave my camera light on just for a bit of focus. So, he is painted exactly the same way as all my other Crisis Battle Suits. I don't have one to hand, but if you want to go and have a look at them in a little more detail close up, well, you can A, look at this, and B, look at the last video, which, as I've said, there'll be a link in the description. So, his main, like, Under Armour is, like, sort of, um... It's painted to match the fatigues. I don't really know what to call that, like, the chassis? No, that's... Is chassis the right word? I mean, there's a robot suit, so I don't really know what to call that. Um, with armor plating done in the blue of the army, of course. Uh, Cantor blue with a 
Lothan Blue Edge Highlighting, McCrag Blue Wash, another round of Lothan Blue if necessary, and then a coat of Ard Coat. I'm pretty sure you all know about that already. There is an extra little component on the legs, this little whirly gig. I don't really know what that's for, but it's a thing and it's there. Um, the main difference is, of course, no jetpack. Oh, that's catching the line, it's going to turn up, because reflective things reflect light, you dummy, you're a physicist, you know this. So, yeah, he's got no jetpack, which means there's a distinct lack of red on the model. There's a lot more red on crisis suits, because they're, in my army at least, the jetpacks are all bright bloody red. Um, I've kind of commented for this on his little shield generate. I don't even know what this thing is. Plasma fuel generator stabilizers. I, I don't really know. Um, I really should do more research before I go talking about these things. And that's painted in the armor colors with the reds around the edge and then silver for the um, looks like the spinny thing or the axles and things. And similar idea sort of down here. Um, I think battle suits are amazing. Like I said it last time, I designed this paint scheme with battle suits in mind. And I have to say, it really works. I really, really like it. Um, those who care about Tau Heraldry, this guy is a Shazwi. Um, generally, um, battle suit pilots are Shazwis, unless they're Sardin, in which case they get called a Chasvre. Um, or Chasvre. I, I write to roll my R's. I guess it's studying French, right? So roll my R's. Anyway, um, so I painted his shoulder pad kind of to match my Fire Warrior shoulder pad, where it's got a little bit of red. Um, I could have done an extra bit down here if I'd wanted to, um, but I think my other Crisis suits only have that one bit of red um, on their shoulder pad, so I painted it to match them. If he'd been a Shazvra, um, he would have a red helmet, uh, or at least he'd have more red on his helmet, probably this front, um, yeah, there is a front segment to his helmet, you can't, or his head, you can't really see it at this angle, um, but that would be painted red. I'd probably paint this central region red and leave that blue and do it that way, um, and there'd probably be a red band on each of his legs, there's white on that leg, and there's white on that leg, but no red, there'd be some red there as well if you were a Shasvra. Um, this is the model I intend to become just a, re a regular broadsider, but now that I've done broadsides once, the next broadside I get, because I'm probably going to have a team of two, will be Shasvra Oblotide 9-0, who has the high yield missile pods, and he will have a red helmet, and he is one of the eight as well, because cool lore reasons. I'll have two of the eight done, actually, and I can also make one of the other Crisis suits into, for example, Sub Commander Torch Star. The only one I can't actually make um, in any way, shape, or form is Commander Arakon, because he has an Enforcer Battle Suit, which is a bit bigger. So if I want to make him, I'm going to have to buy an actual Commander, um, which kind of sucks, but uh, oh well. It doesn't really matter. Um, he'll only be a stand-in for when I can't use far sides, and I'll be talking about future plans a little bit later in the video. So that is the broadside. I know he's not quite done, but he's as done as he needs to be to go and kick some ass on the battlefield. Let's move on now to our final unit, and then we'll talk about some future stuff, shall we? And finally, in today's little showcase, which has actually got a bit longer than I expected it to, is a Fire Warrior Breacher team with a Guardian drone, a gun drone, and a Smart Missile System DSA Tactical Support Turret. Some of you are probably wondering what the hell I'm doing. Um, when I got my second start collecting box, I had the option to make another Fire Warrior team, and the logical thing to do was to make another strike team with pulse rifles. But no, I didn't decide to do that, I decided to make a breacher team. Why? Well, okay, one, the law reasons. Farsight encoded is getting up close and personal, by comparison to regular tap, so it makes sense that you'd have breaches for close assault things. And with Mont Cal, you're probably going to be getting stuck in pretty up close and personal from time to time. There's not much you can do about it. So having a breach team around is pretty helpful. Two, if you get close or are on Overwatch, these guns are ridiculous. I mean, they are just marine melting machines if you can get them to hit something. Um, they don't work with fire blades, but if they did, they'd probably break the game. <laughs> so I'm kind of glad they don't. Um... Would ethereals work with them? I, I need to look that up, but I'm not using ethereals, so it doesn't really matter to me, but it, oh my god, that would be terrifying if it did. Anyway, um, yeah, so their guns are amazing, but they're obviously ludicrously short range, so it kind of fits the law in that sense. Three, I wanted a reason to use the goddamn Guardian drone. Guardian drones are really quite cool. Um, they give a strike team a 6 plus invulnerable set, period. But breachers, because they have a field amplifier relay, which is this doodah on their backpacks means that it gets a five plus 
which is cool. I like this and I wanted to give it a go. Um, I haven't had a chance to yet, these guys. Uh, I didn't use this particular team in my start collecting doubles tournament. I used my strike team with pulse rifles because I wanted triple tap. Um, and I think I don't think it'll be amazing, but 12 points um, to give out a 5 percent vulnerable save to your entire unit, which can include attached characters if you want to. Like, oh, I don't know. Dark Strider, anybody? Maybe, you know? You could put Dark Strider in here and just, oh, watch your opponents cry as they try and charge this thing that overwatches them with absolute murder. And then just runs away. It's, oh, and you're at minus one toughness. I thought, I think I should probably mention that. Dark Strider is ridiculous. And he would work really well in a breacher team. Plus they're a great deterrent to something being charged because like, oh, let's see you're um, like a last couple of assault marines and you want to charge, um, a squad of um, marker like Pathfinders. Oh right, my breacher team are right nearby. Good night, bang. I'll use the Pathfinders marker like Overwatch to buff my Overwatch blizzard skill and then completely wreck your day. Thank you, come again. Uh, and the other thing is I just wanted to paint something that wasn't a pulse rifle and try out all the different configurations for the Fire Warrior kit. Hence the different shoulder pads, the different guns, the different backpacks. Uh, I don't think there's anything else different. No, they're the only the different, the guns, the shoulder pads and the backpacks. Oh, and the helmets, of course, different helmets. Um, they're painted pretty much identically to my Fire Warriors. There's not much really different. Um, kind of like with my strike team, the Breacher, um, Shazui, has a strike team head. This is just because it makes it easier to keep track of him. Because, good grief, he looks very similar to the rest of the squad. With the other team, it was kind of just for aesthetic experimentation. But here... I debated painting his shoulder pad the other way around, um, but that's what my Fireblade has, and he's a Chastnel. He's kind of like his own rank onto himself, so I didn't want to make the Shazweed the same rank as the Chastnel. Hence why the shoulder pad's still that way around, because it's not a third bit you can paint. Sigh. Um, so I need a way to keep track of him other than, you know, a bonding knife and a slightly fancier backpack. So I played it safe, I swapped his head, and it helps. It, it's not ideal, but it helps. Uh, other than that, I painted identically to my strike team. Uh, the Pulse Blasters were pretty easy. I mean, they're very similar to Pulse Rifles and Pulse Carbines in that it's the same sort of core structure. You've got the white thing. Um, that one's not a very good one, actually. Got the white thing on the end. And I'm actually going to go and turn my light on for this. There we go. That's a little bit better, isn't it? So you can see it's a similar structure um, to the Pulse Rifles. The only thing I've done slightly differently is I've actually re-highlighted this upper segment of the blaster. Like you can see the gun's been all washed out, but I redid the main sec this upper section with the brighter red. Don't really know why, just aesthetic reasons and I don't mind it. Uh, the backpacks are painted pretty similarly to regular Fire Warriors, just they've got extra whirly gigs and doohickeys compared to the um, normal Fire Warriors because of the pure amplifier relay, which is like these old extra sticky out bits I've just painted with red like everything else. You can probably tell that some of my highlighting with the low than blue got a bit messy. This one in particular was not a very good one. Um, the Shazwees are easy. The Fire Warrior heads are easier to edge highlight than Breacher heads. Because you only have to go along one edge and it's a much sharper edge rather than a quite flattish edge that you get on the Breacher helmets. Which is why some of it looks a little bit messy. I, I probably need to go back and fix it but that would mean basically starting other helmets all over again. Going right back down to the McCrag, to the Cantor blue, then rewashing, then reglazing, and it, I don't think it's really necessary. Uh, as far as the turret goes, it's painted exactly the same as the other dudes. You lot can all just shut out the wear second and give this dude a little bit of attention. They painted like a drone with the red thing on the front. You've seen it before. The gun drone is painted like every other gun drone you've ever seen, and the guardian drone. Um, I tried putting it on a piranha flying thing, but it's nice and short. That hasn't really helped. Uh, he's just made like a regular drone, um, but he's got this little amplifier generator thing in the middle, which is painted in pretty much the same manner as um, on the broad side, with the little silver spokes painted in silver, and then a power core, which is like all the other stuff um, on all the other weapons. So it's just white with a black bit up the middle. And then it's got the little antennae and the little bits on the end of the generator are painted in red. So that is all of the models that I've managed to get done um, since the last update, which I know was a while ago. So I've had plenty of time to get to this stage, but then again, I've had exams going on. Uh, I'm two down, two to go at the time of recording, if you're 
even remotely interested. Um, so that's where we're at. So um, I'm now going to stop recording and we're going to talk about some future plans for the army. So there you go. That's my Tau update for now, at the very least. Um, in terms of stuff I've still got to actually do, well, there's everything I talked about in the video that um, I haven't quite finished, i.e. finishing off the broadside, drones, etc, etc. And then I have three crisis suits that I haven't even touched yet for my second start collecting box that I'm going to need to crack on with, and then I'll be completely up to date. Now, where am I going next? Because it's all well and good having an army, just let me check out there for a second. It's all well and good having an army, it's all well and good having a little collection, what you're doing with it, but you need to know where you're going next. So, where are we going next? Well, the logical thing for me to do is probably to get Farsight pretty damn soon. I mean, I have two full Fire Warrior teams now, one Breacher, one Strike. I can make up to four troops out of them. I have a Crisis team done and another one on the go, uh, or ready to start. I have a little bit of maneuverability in my Piranha. I have a Pathfinder team for those Mark Lights, and I have some heavy fire in the form of my Broadside. What I'm now lacking and I'm lacking sorely, is anti-tank. And Farsight, while he's not great for that, um, would allow me to take Crisis Suits in the troop slot, uh, which would free up some elite slots for other things, for example, Stealth Suits, who can carry Fusion Blasters, and are a little bit cheaper than Crisis Suits. And I'm going to be honest, I started this on Farsight, so it was only going to be a matter of time before I got him anyway. Uh, in terms of what I actually need next, I don't think he's actually necessary right now, but... He is the end result. I'll be getting him pretty soon, if not next. Like I say, what I need most desperately is probably anti-tank. I am sorely, sorely lacking in anti-tank. I have anti-infantry everywhere. In my Fire Warrior team, my Pathfinder team if they're not marking something, my drones, I've got loads of them that can do it, smart missile systems, I've got weapon options on my crisis suits, but I'm lacking in dedicated anti-tank. That's why the Piranha will always have a fusion blaster. That's why I prefer my broadside with rail as opposed to missile pod, although there is still an argument to be had about whether the missile pod is actually a better thing for anti-tank. And it's why um, I have Bright Sword, who has his fusion blasters glued in, because I need that anti-tank all the time. So in terms of fixing that issue, the next logical unit to add would be something like another Piranha. Something like a stealth team, because they come with Fusion Blaster. Um, or possibly we look at um, another broadside. Uh, we go that way, get a two-man team who are just dedicated to blowing the bejesus out of anything. And it can also function as my Skyfire unit, because I just give them velocity trackers for when I have to face Flyerants, Helldrakes, and whatnot. Um, but there, there's obviously Farsight. And the other thing that's tugging at me right now is is a Riptide. Um, it was only going to be a matter of time before the inevitable when is it right to get a Riptide discussion comes up and I don't know if I need one yet because well, thinking about it I have when I'm finished I'll have seven battle suits, 30 Chasselas Fire Warriors in various configurations. Um, my Pathfinder team if I want can actually make um, a Pathfinder, uh, sorry, a Fire Warrior Strike Team with Pulse Carbines if I really need it in a pinch. So, I've got plenty of core troops, I've got the Marker Light support, I've got a few boxy battle suits, um, I don't rate the tail vehicles that highly with the exception probably of the Hammerhead, so it's not going to be long before we look into the Riptide. The other unit that I've been thinking about, in fact it just crossed my mind in the last five minutes, was the Ghost Keel. Because the Ghost Keel does everything that Stealth Suits do, only better, because it can be a bit more specialised than one guy carrying a Fusion Blaster out of a three-man team. So a Ghost Keel would be really useful, um, both as a distraction Karn effects, although it's not as effective as a Riptide in that regard, but it's tanky as all anything because it's like invisible half the time. And um, it's quite nasty, so I've got to think about Ghost Keel... Riptide, Farsight, or I keep extending the core of the army a little bit further, getting a second Piranha perhaps, maybe another Broadside, before I look into the really fun, shiny stuff. Um, if you have any thoughts about what you think I should be adding to the army next, do let me know in the comments. I'd be very interested to see what you have to say on the whole matter. Um, and yeah, that's it. 
Um, that is my update so far. Um, apologies for any lighting issues. Um, when I, I'm recording this sort of in post, and when I recorded it, um, I was quite happy with the lighting when I had my camera light on, but then when I put it through YouTube, it seems to have made it extremely exaggerated to the point where like, did I really need that? Particularly when I, when I did the Breacher team. So if there are any lighting issues, I do apologize. Um, those, yes, they're on my end, but that's partially through the rendering that YouTube's done on the video as much as it is what my camera's put up. Um, so I do apologize for that, but um, anyway. So thank you very much for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed the video. My name is Michael for Tactic Imperialis. Until the next time, see you all again. Bye for now.